before. Um, what makes it different from our previous products is that we built in the uh, intelligence. Uh, we built in object avoidance with these two front-facing optical sensors. We also built in a uh, much higher accuracy for position holding in environments where GPS isn't available. Besides doing this, uh, what we've done is we've improved the efficiency of the Phantom 4 um, through uh, the motor positioning and also a, a, a bigger battery. The, the thing that makes the Phantom 4 different from our previous products is that it is much more of an intelligent system now. Um, as, it, as you're flying, as it approaches an object, uh, it'll avoid this object. What you can do in tap fly is you can tap in a direction just on your uh, mobile device. And uh, through what the main camera is seeing, it will just fly in that direction. If there's an object in the way, uh, let's say a tree, if it'll first judge whether it can go over the tree. If it can't go over the tree, it'll try to go around this tree. If it can't do any of this, it'll just stop. Previously, we were using, and also other companies out there, were using GPS. GPS using a beacon or a bracelet or the mobile device. We're trying to make sure that the Phantom is framing the shot. But when you're shooting like that, it's almost like you're shooting with a cameraman uh, that is blindfolded. So they kind of know the general direction, but they don't know what they're shooting. Uh, with Active Track, we are able to actually recognize an object. So if I said, I want to uh, tap on a person, um, and I just tap on them, and then the, the phantom will recognize that as a person, an actual person icon will pop up, and then you just say go. Um, what happens there is the phantom will start to, uh, it'll recognize this person, and as a person rotates, uh, the phantom will actually start to learn what the shape of this person. If the person squats down, it's still the same person. If the person turns around to their back, uh, it, the phantom will still recognize it as the same person. So what this allows you to do is um, besides just being able to track a person, the Phantom can actually start to orbit this person while the person is walking or running. Um, and during this movement, um, if there's something in front of the Phantom, it'll stop and avoid the object or it'll try to go around the object. Um, how that works is through these two front-facing sensors. Because we have two front-facing sensors, we can see depth and we can create an, a volumetric map of what is in front of it. So if there's uh, uh, two objects, one that's closer, uh, one that's a little further, and empty space, the Phantom is gonna make a decision. Do I go towards that, uh, that, that object that's closer? Uh, if it's short enough, do I go over it? Or do I go around this object um, and towards the second object? So it's applying a zero, one, and two. So it's applying confidence levels of where I can go zero, I don't want to go towards that object, one, uh, I am going to go move towards that object, and two is empty space. It's uh, giving it a confidence level. Where is it most confident of flying? And it's making this decision uh, with the all new um, onboard processors for, uh, that are dedicated machine learning. If you count the number of cameras, there are five cameras on board. Two front facing, two downward facing, and one the main camera. This gives uh, SDK developers uh, many more sensors. Um, and much more information, allowing the SDK developers to create uh, apps and, and utilize these sensors uh, for, like, say, inspection. If you're taking the Phantom and you're flying it uh, towards a wind turbine, you can actually say, I want to tap and fly towards that direction. And instead of you having a spotter there saying, I want to inspect this wind turbine, this, this, this blade on this wind turbine, the Phantom will stop before the wind turbine and um, instead of crashing into it, you can get much closer to an object and do an inspection. Now, this wasn't available before because we didn't have these object avoidance sensors and we didn't have computer vision. So, what we're really excited about are seeing what developers can do with all of these additional sensors.